Aston Martin vanquishes Volante. What is it? The changes wrought to the Aston Martin Vanquish S Coupe at the start of the year were also made to the soft top, the Volante, at the same time. But then the weather was cold, and now it is hot, so here we are, being given the opportunity to test the roofless Vanquish S for the first time. Those changes, then. Last year, Aston Martin felt that although its Super GT car was plenty GT enough, it wasn't super enough especially given the arrival of the DB11, and the need for this car to stay on sale for two more years. So it turned up the Vanquish's wick and called it the Vanquish S. What's it like? Power from the 5.9 liter, badge 6.0, naturally aspirated V12 went up from 565 bhp to 592 bhp, 600 ps, and although peak torque stayed the same, at 465 pounds foot. There was more of it, more of the time. More noise, too, thanks to a freer flowing exhaust that was part of the reason for the extra power, although the induction system was also revised. We've been running a Vanquish S Coupe for a few thousand miles and the sound is pretty sensational and rarely tiring. Externally, the Coupe received aerodynamic tweaks that made their way onto the Volante, too although presumably they'll have less effect here because the shape is less slippery overall. Where Coupe and Volante differ most, though, is in their suspension. Both received tweaks, and Coupe and Convertible retain the same geometry, springs and anti roll bars, but because of the Volante's weight penalty, its adaptive dampers get their own rates to cope with the extra weight and its location. From that perspective, the Volante is a pretty old-school convertible. In the mid-engine market, we've become accustomed to roof mechanisms adding no more than 50 kg and feeling no discernible loss of structural rigidity as a result. That's not really the Volante's way. This is a front-engined, aluminium structured car with plus two rear seats, which means you're chopping a large area of structural stiffness enhancing material when you lop off the back of it. Then, in replacing it with a heavy electric opening closing mechanism and thoroughly well insulated fabric hood, you add 100 kilograms or so, just where you don't want it from a dynamic perspective, hi. Inevitably, then, the Volante is less of a sports car than its coupe sibling. But, I suppose, that's not going to be the choice, coupe or Volante, is it? It'll be Volante or Ferrari California T, Rolls Royce Dawn, or Bentley Continental GT Convertible and against rivals from other makers, the Vanquish S is arguably even more competitive than its hard-topped sibling, because there's no soft-top version of the Ferrari 812 Superfast to give it a hard time. Besides which, the Vanquish S's character makes it through the roof cut largely unscathed. The ride remains good and, although you're aware there's more girth being carried around, body control is tight, too. There is flop, mind. Of course there is. Look in the rear view mirror, which gets a little shimmy on over poor surfaces, and you'll see the rear seat tops getting their own little shimmy going, too. The steering has more kickback and wobble than a stiffer cars. But, heck, if you wanted the full Super GT experience, you wouldn't be looking at a convertible. So sit back, enjoy the fact that the chassis balance inherent in every Aston Martin is very much present that the steering is still linear, the throttle response crisp, the 8-speed automatic gearbox firmly locked with precious little slush, and the sound far easier to hear, to hear.